بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله We uh, begin today the uh, actual text of uh, Imam Ghazali's Kitab Sharh Ajayb Al-Qalb The Marvels of the Heart Book 21 of Ihya Ulum al-Din The Revival of Islamic Sciences, the Religious Sciences Translated by Walter James Skelly This is a 1938 translation that was done at uh, Harvard uh, Seminary. It was his PhD uh, dissertation. We have read uh, Timothy uh, Winter's um, foreword. We read uh, part of the, uh, we read the uh, uh, editor's notes. We read uh, a good part of the uh, authors, the translators, um, Biographic sketch of uh, Imam Ghazali's uh, life and work, but also uh, ideas. And uh, towards the end of the last session, ultimately I said that uh, the uh, readers, of course the listeners at the, the right now, but the readers can uh, read the uh, introduction with the, these notes on their own. And today, inshallah, we'll begin with the actual uh, text of Imam Ghazali, the translation, of course. Suleyman so Ghazali, rahmanullah, said, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim in the name of God, the merciful, the compassionate. And this is, of course, as noted by the uh, translator, that uh, this Bismillah, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim it's really, uh, it's a, a, a blessing that is invoked at the beginning of every uh, good action and the next uh, the prayer of course uh, being thankful grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praise really belongs to God alhamdulillah and uh, we know that from the uh, several traditions uh, that every uh, important thing that does not begin begin with alhamdulillah uh, uh, really the three words that usually they are mentioned in these traditions abtar them in the sense so that it is incomplete so that without the uh, praising allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would be incomplete and this is for every, uh, this is why, this is the life of the Muslim. Whether it's uh, studying, whether it's uh, eating, whether it's uh, teaching, whether it's uh, going to a carpentry, um, a blacksmith, going to uh, be beginning work in construction, opening the door of your business uh, in the morning, the a transaction etc really the life of the muslim uh, always there is uh, an invocation a, a supplication uh, a prayer a blessing and the next would be uh, it it does have a, a, in this uh, uh, introductory uh, paragraph uh, uh, ultimately, the uh, mentioning the theme of the book, since this is book uh, 21, the theme of the book would be included somewhere in the in the paragraph, and we'll just uh, read and point to that. He said, uh, "Praise belongs to God, whose Majesty perplexes the hearts." And here we have the. Uh, when we talk about the marvels of the hearts, he man managed to mention the hearts whose majesty perplexes the hearts and thoughts of those who seek in vain to comprehend it. Whose shining light at the beginning in such a, is such as to bewilder the eye, sight, eye and sight, who's acquainted with all hidden secrets, who knows all that conscience conceals who has no need of counselor or helper in ruling his kingdom, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The overturner of hearts 
and the forgiver of sins. Muqallib al qulub So again, the hearts are mentioned, and this is really uh, the uh, in the uh, uh, there's the hearts are between uh, two fingers of uh, uh, of God, and again, this is uh, a metaphor. Uh, for nothing is like unto him, nothing in his uh, creation resembles uh, what is like unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, no uh, physical attributes could be uh, part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whatever crosses the mind, that is really not the case. So it is the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala controls the hearts. This is really, really the meaning of muqallib al the overturner of uh, of hearts and the forgiver of sins, the concealer of faults, the deliverer from anxieties. And may blessings and peace rest in abundance upon the master of the messengers, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, upon the master of the messengers who unites religion and defeats heretics, and upon his descendants, the righteous and the pure. The honor and excellence of man, in which he surpasses all other sorts of creatures, is his aptitude for knowing God. Praise be to him. This knowledge is man's beauty and perfection and glory in the present world. And his provision and, st and store for the world to come. He is prepared for this, for this knowledge only through his heart and not by means of any of his members. Any of his members, really any of his uh, uh, limbs, organs, other than the heart. For it is the heart that knows God and works for God and strives towards God, towards God and draws near to Him, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the members of the body, okay, there is uh, the word reveals as if the heart reveals. Uh, no, this is uh, not the case. In Arabic, uh, Now, I think we should have uh, a comma and then وَهُوَ الْمُكَاشِفُ not الْمُكَاشِفُ the heart does not reveal it's basically it is revealed to the heart okay just think about the paragraph before and think about the whole thing that the heart is uh, has the aptitude to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to receive it's he he is ready, the human being is ready uh, to receive knowledge through uh, and with his heart. So it's Mukashif rather than uh, Mukashif. And to it is revealed that which is in the presence of God, that which uh, God has, of course, it is always partial, partial knowledge.
the members of the body on the other hand are merely followers, servants. and instruments that the heart uses and employs as the king uses his slave and the shepherd makes use of his flock this could be a metaphor for uh, uh, of course the rai is the shepherd but kullukum uh, rai wa kullukum mas'ulun an ra'iyyatihi this is ultimately uh, used for uh, human beings being responsible for uh, no one is without uh, a flock if you will so we talk about human beings the highest the highest form is the highest form amongst human beings would be the uh, the state and uh, you talk about the uh, political leader uh, at the uh, top of the uh, pyramid in the executive uh, office as we uh, we call it or as the crafts, craftsman uses his tool for it is the heart that is accepted by God when it is free from all save him but veiled from God when it becomes wholly occupied with anything other than him it is the heart upon which claims are made with which conversations are carried on and with which remonstrance is made and which is punished it rejoices in nearness to God and prospers if kept true and is undone and miserable if debased and corrupted it is that which is reality it is that which in reality is obedient to God, the exalted, and the acts of devotion that are manifest in the members of the body are but its light. It is that also which is obedient and rebellious against God, the exalted, and the acts of turpitude that course through the members are but its effects by its darkness and its light there appear the good and evil there appear the good and evil qualities of its external appearance since every vessel drips that which it contains this is a proverbial the heart, the heart is that which if a man knows it, he knows himself. And if he knows himself, he knows his Lord. It is that which, if a man knows, if a man knows it not, he knows, he knows not himself. And if he knows not himself, he knows not his Lord. He who knows not his own heart is still more ignorant of everything else, since the majority of mankind know not their own hearts and their own selves for intervention has been made between them and then and their own selves for god intervenes between a man and his heart
ان الله يحول بين المرء وقلبه His intervention consists in preventing man from observing observing it is meaning uh, that is his heart and watching over it and becoming acquainted with its qualities and perceiving how it is turned between two of the fingers of the merciful and how at one uh, time it lusts for the lowest of the law and is brought down to the plane of the demons and at another time it mounts up to the highest of the high and advances to the wall of the angels who are drawn near to God these are al al muqarrabun he who knows not his heart to watch over it and to be mindful of it and to observe the, what shines on it and in it of the treasures of the world of spirits al malakut alam malakut he is one of those whom god the exalted has said those who forget god and he made and he made them to forget their own souls such are the rebellious transgressors nasullah fa ansahum an fusahum ulaikum al fasiqun Thus, the knowledge of the heart and of the real nature of its qualities is the root of religion and the foundation of the mystic traveler's way. Since we have completed the first part of this book, which deals with those acts of worship, this book, meaning the revival of the Islamic religious sciences, which deals with those acts of worship and customs that are carried out by the external bodily members, which is external knowledge. And since we have promised to explain in the second part those mortal vices and saving virtues that come upon the heart, which is inner knowledge, we must preface this part with two books. One book will deal with the explanation of the heart's qualities and characteristics, and the second with the manner of disciplining the heart and improving its characteristics. After that, we will launch forth into a detailed discussion of the things that destroy and save al muhlikat wal munjiyat. Each basically, uh, each one of them is a quarter of Ihya al din after that, we will launch forth into a detailed discussion of the things that destroy and save. So we shall now mention that which can be most readily understood of the exposition of the wonders of the heart by means of examples. Most minds are too dull to comprehend the plain statement of its wonders and of its secrets that pertain to the realm of the world of spirits. Al-Asami, an exposition, this is chapter 1 of book 21, an exposition of the meaning of soul, spirit, heart, and intelligence, or reason, and of the purpose of these names. Al-Aql, typically we translate that as reason. Know that there are four names that are used in these chapters. But few of the leading servants have a comprehensive knowledge of these names and their different meanings and of the definitions of the things named. Most of the mistakes regarding them originate in ignorance of the meaning of these names and of the way in which they are applied to different objects. We will explain as much of the meaning of these names as pertains to our purpose. One of these terms, one of these is the term heart, qalb. And it is used with two meanings. One of them is the cone-shaped organ of flesh, sonawbari. Literally, it comes from the uh, pine uh, cone. 
uh, shape. And the word is really about pine cone. So one of them is the cone-shaped organ of flesh that's located at the left side of the chest. It is flesh of a particular sort within which there is a cavity. And in this cavity, there is a there is black there is a black blood that is the source manba and seat madan of the spirit ruh. Now here, there's um, some people might think this is a minute issue. I think it's a very major issue since there are no uh, there is no uh, coma at all which would uh, make the the blood really uh, as uh, the uh, the source of this uh, uh, ruh okay now let me uh, read the arabic and um, uh, point to the uh, the uh, exact place of the problem since you know at the time uh, the original text does not have any um, you know it, it you know really the uh, it depends on the reader uh, and uh, the knowledge of the uh, reader where to stop so here he says اللفظ الاول لفظ القلب ويطلق لمعنيين احدهما اللحم الصنوبري الصنوبري شكل المودع في الجانب الايسر من الصدر وهو لحم مخصوص وفي باطنه تجويف وفي ذلك التجويف دم اسود Okay. هو منبع الروح ومعدنه. The ولا نص ولا نص عن شرح شرح شكله شرح شرح شكله وكيفيته. Okay. The pronouns here or hundred percent are about the uh, the uh, the heart. So there should be a comma after uh, dam aswad. Okay, wa fi batni. This we should skip the blood altogether. It will be like this. Wa fi batni hi tajweef. Wa fi batni tajweef. So the uh, so the qalb itself wa man ba ruh wa madano. It's not the uh, it's not the lahm itself. It's not that it is in the uh, the uh, cone shaped, you know. Uh, the shape in itself is not the the uh, the issue. It's not that it is in the left side of the uh, of the chest. Uh, it's not the cavity, but here it says woman uh, wa uh, the. Uh, وفي ذلك تجويف دم الأسود just like جملة معطرضة. So I think this is a, a major uh, issue that uh, there should be there is so in English and in this cavity there is there is black blood coma that is the source and seat of the spirit. So it should go back to the uh, uh, to the heart itself rather than everything else later on the uh, all the pronouns are about the uh, the heart not the uh, the blood He continues by saying, "We do not, we do not know, we do not know now. Propose to explain its shape nor its mode of operation, since religious ends have no connection therewith, but only the aim of physicians, cardiologists today, uh, animals, and even the uh, the dead." have this heart of flesh whenever we use the term heart in this book in this book we do not mean this sort of heart for it is but an important 
for it is but an important bit of which we will uh, explain later the meaning predominates among Sufis for they mean by the soul that principle in man that includes his blameworthy qualities so they say the soul must be uh, striven against and broken this alludes to by the Prophet ﷺ in his statement your soul which is between your two sides is your worst uh, enemy the uh, there's a lengthy uh, entry beginning with the second uh, meaning and I think we inshallah will begin uh, with this uh, at the beginning of the uh, next session inshallah we'll just go back to the uh, this hadith of uh, al-bayhaqi and uh, uh, and we'll continue uh, from there inshallah so until until next time inshallah subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh